Welcome back, YouTubers, to another Monday Night Raw review with us, that British Fest. Good tune. And together once again for another Monday night. Make sure you guys subscribe up above, like this video, and comment your thoughts on the show in that comment section below. And please contact us in the link in the description box below. Yes, I am Mr. Parkin wearing my V-neck once again, and this is NJ. And you know exactly what he's going to do. What's up? And he just did it for you guys out there. You should appreciate that right there, shouldn't they, NJ? Very much so. And... Who did we start off this Raw with, NJ? The one who should have started off last week before Triple H did, Alberto Del Rio. And that is a lot coming from a, John, uh, a Triple H marks for yourself, isn't it? <laughs> Basically, we opened with the WWE Champion in Del Rio. I didn't expect them to open with him this week, but we then got Cena come out after Del Rio got like one word of my time. Then we got Punk. And basically, Punk comes out and says that Cena doesn't deserve a title shot because he invokes his rematch clause. And they're kind of fighting over who deserves this rematch because um, they both want to face Del Rio for the title. The way I see it is that, obviously, it was quite poor beginning because Alberto Del Rio, One word. his last promo last week weren't the best. I'm just thinking they had a big chance to improve it this week. But instead, before Alberto Del Rio could prove that he can do better promos than last week, Cena comes out and I just thought, God, you're such an arse, you could have waited until a bit after he's actually said something mm. or came late in the night. Punk coming out was good because obviously Cena and Mike, I just got bored after a few seconds. And then Triple H coming out and then setting up uh, what's going on between those three, it was yeah. good. It was mainly about Punk and Cena, wasn't it? Which I think is a bit of an appreciative to your WWE champion. I do feel the WWE champion does kind of need to be the focus of the segment, although I do understand that Cena and Punk are, the, are, the, are sort of like, you know, were, did main event SummerSlam and Money in the Bank. So I guess that's it's okay, in my opinion. Like you said, Triple H made a number one contendership match main event between Cena and Punk to face Do Rio and Night of Champions. Uh, we've seen this match at Money in the Bank. We've seen this match at SummerSlam, and now we're getting it as our main event on Raw. So... I always enjoy these matches, so I was kind of looking forward to this main event. Very so, good. the opener did kind of set it up. I do think it maybe could have accomplished it in a shorter time, but I guess when Triple H is in there, you're going to get as much time as you need. You're true. Okay, what did you think of the opening segment? It's very good. But then the next match was Alberto De Rio versus Mr. Barry Alive, John Morrison. Mr. Buried Alive, I love That's the concept there. I can understand why they have this match. I, I know I don't, as, I'm, as a John Morrison might myself, I don't like him getting buried too much, but... He's not really in a title feud at the moment, so this match wasn't too bad booking in my opinion because Morrison is just not involved in the title, so you might as well have him job for someone like is, Del Rio. Again, John Morrison's returned, he's won one match, and now you have him against someone that is of course going to beat him down. I just thought, I know there's not much of the wrestling could have gone against, but this is doing no favour for John Morrison. Yeah, but that was my next question, I was going to say, who do you think he could have gone up against or else? And maybe had a promo segment devoted to him, maybe? A promo that would should have Refilled his missed out time in the opening segment, so it would have been yeah. better. The match itself wasn't it wasn't that bad though. It was it went twelve and a half minutes, so we got plenty of time with adverts as well, of course. Um, and Dario Rio gets the uh, gets the clean win in a somewhat decent match. Um, I was quite happy with the match. Um, you know, just I, I didn't really see the point of Del Rio wrestling after last week. But then they continued to bury John Morrison by attacking outside the ring, and I just yeah. thought, poor Morrison, nothing's good going right for you at the moment. So I wouldn't have minded if Truth had interfered and just done something, because they would have developed the storyline again between Morrison and, and Truth, but it seems like they're stopping with that now, so I don't know. It was, a, it was an okay segment, an, an okay match, but, you know, John Morrison getting buried again. That's pretty much it, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Um... Next we have Divas action. Lovely, lovely Divas action between Eve Torres and Brie Bella. And this is one of those matches you just know isn't going to be very good, especially when it only lasts two and a half freaking minutes. I'm just kind of glad it finished. It was a pretty much boring yeah. match. We had that whole pre-recorded Divas of Doom segment uh, at the beginning, which just, to me, just seemed so bad. I don't know what it was. It was just bad. And I really... Why can't they have to be featured in the ring? I, I don't know. In the, at the end, they just come out and congratulate. Very I, good. I just... I think they could... Can't they just do a bit more than this? It's just maybe, my, my, my maybe point. Next week. Yeah, hopefully next week. Um, what else did we get here? Just a, a Eve Torres winning, really, wasn't yeah. it? Uh, in a not-so-good match. Uh, next segment we get is our is our US title development segment for Night of Champions, I guess, because we have Vicky Guerrero coming out, introducing Jack Swagger, and we get the same match that we got last week in Jack Swagger and Alex Riley. Come on. The only uh, problem with this is that, just like last match, it ended with a distraction. Yeah. Because basically we had Ziggler coming down to talk to Vicky. Mm. Ziggler somehow managed to distract uh, Swagger and Alex Wade does a roll up for the 1-2-3. Yeah. Uh, a question though. Could they not have made this a number one contender match? Maybe? Like, the, you know, just an idea? 
Oh, it looks like Alex Riley's going to get his uh, mm. sh shot the championship anyway. So, but wouldn't it be good if he could have earned it using a number one I know you're a big fan of number one contendership. I matches. would be, but the way that Alex Riley's getting all his involvement with Ziggler, you know it's going to happen. So I'm not really bothered anymore. Okay then. So Ziggler and Swagger have a little bit of an altercation. So we don't really know what's going on there. Alex Riley wins. There we go. Um, we then have the the one hour main event segment between Kevin Nash and Triple H, and basically Triple H comes out and says. Kevin Nash, you don't work for WWE at the moment, and I know you're going a lot of involvement with Punk, and Punk crossed the line, but I really, I really need you to leave. I'm the sorry, I need is, you to leave. There was the talk between them two, and I was like, uh, Nash was actually defending himself mm. quite a bit because obviously he said he only did his job and he thinks of doing the right thing, and again. I was hoping for more from Kevin Nash, but I think what he did on War was obviously he got his point across, and it's definitely tensed more things on with Triple H and Punk. Yeah, you still see a little bit of um, you know a bit of tension on the mic with Kevin Nash. Not the best mic worker, probably returning from a you know long mic absence from on TV. But like you said, Punk comes out um, basically he's saying, could it be Stephanie? Could it be Triple H? Is it Nash? You know, he just wants to know what's going on, and you get and they Triple H and CM Punk get in each other's face. So I think I see, um, uh, the Triple H is trying to sort his authority and on, Triple CM, H, on CM Punk. Triple H told Kevin, uh, told Punk, if you cross my line, I will lay you down. So yep. I think they're really going to heat slip more up between those two. Yes, this segment really did that very well because then Nash attacked Punk. Which, oh, yeah, it was good. Which, uh, yeah. you know, was a great end to the segment. Um, you know, effective segment for developing a storyline, I guess. And we see CM Punk once again, which can only be good, in my opinion, so, on, on a Raw. I look forward to seeing what goes on between these three... It's a continual yeah. weeks up to it's the, champions. It's the biggest storyline that Raw have got at the moment, really, isn't yeah, it? it is, yes. So we look forward to seeing more from it next week. Um, next we have, next we have yeah, an unannounced tag team title match between Atunga and Megalakati and Kofi and Evan Bourne. And just as you thought, they might just be building to a tag team championship match at the pay-per-view. They have it on Raw on free TV. I was quite disappointed because the way you look at it, the next pay-per-view is all about the championships. And the fact is, between as I said before, this whole uh, time leading up to pay per views should be all about building up, getting you want in the match. And the fact is, we only had one week of the match building to this. Mm -hmm. And again, I just think it happened too soon, and I just was disappointed they had it on Raw instead of like the pay per view. It's the same two matches in two weeks. Could you not have had a promo segment, maybe developing a storyline between the two? Maybe introduce another tag team in there. The Usos, maybe. I don't know. I just, I just don't see why WWE really have to blow their wad. On this all in one go, and they have uh, Evan Bourne and um, Evan Bourne and Cody Kingston win the match as well. So you have new tag team champions on Raw. Could you not have stretched this out to the pay per view? It would have been so. It would have meant so much more if it was done on a pay per view, wouldn't it? That's the main point of it. Yeah. You know, it was a decent tag team match, but you know, could they not do something more with this tag team division? United Champions. What are you going to do now for United Champions? Have them get their rematch? That's probably much it. Yeah. Ugh, I don't know. It's just don't don't really know what's going on with that. I will say one thing though. I am fucking glad the belts are off McKilla uh, Cutty <laughs> and Odunga. Because yeah, I never really liked them. Yeah, too soon. I never liked them as tag team champions. I really didn't. No. Um, and then we get the interview segment with the new tag champs. It's kind of reiterating the fact, which I did actually yeah, like. these jobbers and <laughs> pointless people coming to celebrate. We have Oksana in the background going, Yay, I'm not flirting with Teddy Long this week. <laughs> I don't know, Zack Ryder, fucking hell. Um, we then get a very strange segment. Because Santino comes out for a match, NJ as he does marks out for Santino because he loves Santino, and all of a sudden your boy gets attacked by Truth and Miz, and you weren't even upset by this, were you? Because no. you enjoyed the segment, and so did I, because it's basically our Truth and Miz stamping their authority on the WWE, doing a CM Punk. Because like they make the it. point is that before Triple H got involved and became the owner of yep. wrestling, we have them two actually had a mean in the WWE. We had like our Truth being involved in near high mid card. We had Main events, yeah. Miz get involved, who's the ex champion. So I think they made a good point saying that they doing nothing now, so all they're gonna do is stump on every little spy that gets in their <laughs> way. The thing I was hoping for, I had my fingers crossed that they were gonna mention about going to SmackDown mm -hmm. to get tricked better. Because SmackDown does need more main eventers and those two could have been in the SmackDown main event. It would have been a decent way to do it, but I guess it what they basically want to do, it give, at least it gives them a bit of mic time to get their point out. And I do agree with them. They're not really being used very much. And I think that's mainly due to the fact that Rey Mysterio is injured and they don't really want to go with that John Morrison truth feud. No, no. Um, but basically, I just there was a lot of good mic work here. I think they've worked the crowd really well, didn't they? You know, shut up! 
you know, you're all, you all suck, and then they have the you suck thing at the end, and it's just like, you know, great heel work by the two. Is this, my only issue with this though, is this the best way you can get them on TV? Could you not try and get them in a feud, maybe? Or a tag team, even well, even as a tag team? Well, to be honest, I was quite happy with this, because obviously, while the WWE just lost of ideas what to do with these two, I think getting them promos to fit up, so they mm. are actually involved in the show, yeah. involved in wrestling, was fine. I thought this was really good for these two. I don't know about you, but I'd love to see these two as a tag team, in the tag team, maybe even go after the tag team championships, give them something to do, that even if they've not got that much to do now, although I know it might be a bit of a downgrade, but get them involved in the tag team championships, maybe I could see these two being a good tag team against, against the baby faces of Evan Bourne and Kobe Kingston. I'm just saying. I just what I saw tonight. I like, I like to keep them away from tag team and go on to, like, as I said, I'm sticking to this, they should go on to SmackDown. Oh, well, even the British Fist, we have our separate opinions, don't mm -hmm. we, NJ? Um, right, let's get to the main event then, because the main event was the main event of Money in the Bank, which is awesome. SummerSlam, not quite as good. And then you had the Raw uh, main event, which is Cena and Punk in the number one contendership match for their for the WWE Championship at the Night of Champions pay per view, and we had Del Rio and Laronitis at ringside. Um, we also had a little thing with uh, Laronitis telling Na telling Triple H that Nash had been involved in a car accident. Uh, the way I say this is that obviously, when I heard this, I was expecting okay, Laronitis has got to plan. He probably mm. took out Kevin Nash. Then you see them at the ring at him at ringside, yep. and I thought. Is there going to be some involvement here? Oh, you think there might be some sort of conspiracy theory there? Somewhere, yeah. Yeah, I think our truth might have a point for fucking once in his promos. But anyway, you know that Cena and Punk are going to put on a good main event. And they did. They put on a good match for what it was until Nash came out, which is a bit strange. I didn't expect Nash to come out because we all thought he'd been involved in a car accident. So we've got some more conspiracy stuff going on there. Um, your thoughts on the match and the Nash interference? The match itself, I'm going to say... It was, uh, again, we had them wrestling before. Yeah. It's just the third time lucky. There was people all saying, oh, this is going to be a punk getting over and just prove that he's the mm -hmm. rightful person to be the champion. But uh, the uh, the afterall thought we had Kevin Ash turning up and distracting <laughs> uh, CM Punk. Yep. And then CM Punk just run straight into a actual adjustment for the one, two, three. Kind of similar to what happened to Night of Champions when Vincent Man had seen it, really, wasn't it? Pretty much. Um, but yeah, I mean, we had a bit of inter bit of involvement with Nash, I guess. So I guess what basically they're really trying to do is they're trying to set up a Del Rio punk, a Del Rio Cena feud going into Night Champions, and then this whole Nash and Punk feud as well. Instead of maybe having a triple threat of Night Champions, which I thought might have been good, it looks like they're going to be doing these two separate feuds. One of them being a title feud, the other one being like a draw. That's what I was kind of hoping because yeah, at first people were saying, "Oh, they're gonna make a triple threat," but I'm thinking, no, I like the fact it's gonna be a one on one because you need, like we always say, you need mm -hmm. more. Feud building up here and there. Yep. So the fact you're having Cena and Del Rio for a little while and Nash and CM Punk for a while, I think it just worked out pretty well. Yeah. And you know Nash and CM Punk are going to get promo time every week to develop a storyline which could be very good with Triple H, so I guess that's good as well. After the match, we have Del Rio beating on Cena, making Del Rio look very, very strong. And one thing I will say here is this is how you book a new champion. This is how The Miz should have been booked from day one, wasn't it really? Well, you had... Uh Hit him looking strong last yep. when he beat Rey Mysterio. Following on when he took out the uh, normal contender, mm -hmm. Cena, the biggest guy in WWE yep. at the moment. I think that definitely made uh, Del Rio look definitely a great champion leading up to his next title. And defense. a good way of ending the show. It was a great way to end the yep. show. To see, to see someone like Del Rio, a kind of newer guy into the title scene, getting one up on, on Cena was very good. It's something that we never get on SmackDown because Orton likes to fucking bury everyone on that roster. That's true. Cena can put a guy over though. The thing is, I'm just saying that with Cena now, again, uh, again, I was not happy at the beginning of Raw when he got involved in Del Rio's uh, mic time, mm. but this definitely made up for it. Cena getting mm. laid out and finished the show. Overall thoughts on this show? Again, I'm not going to say it was the best Raw, because there's quite a lot of Raw that I was thinking, oh, great, where's the hype going up to my, uh, Night of Champions? Yeah. But again, it gave us some good feeling coming to next week, mm. and it's left us still wondering more what Triple H is going to do when he comes back next week. So I think and it finished off with a good match and a good ending. I feel on this Raw, it wasn't the best Raw, but it wasn't the worst Raw because you had a good match between Del Rio and Morrison. You have the further development of the Nash Triple H Punk storyline going on there. Uh, new Tag Team Champions, I guess, is a positive thing, even though it really should have been done at the pay-per-view, in my opinion. Um, we've got a number one contender number one contender now going for the pay-per-view. It just really needs to, needs to be announced. I think what WWE just needs to do is get these get these matches announced, get some feuds on that card just and as quickly as possible now, just so they can build tonight of Champions. And this, I think this did a, a decent job in continuing the build, I guess. Not the best job, but still a decent job. Well, again, 
I'm not. This whole show has not got me really feeling for no, it. There was a couple of odd segments that wasn't there. Not really got me feeling because obviously the Demons they could have done better with that. They could have done better with the tag. And I'm glad the main event cleared it all up for me. Yeah. I do agree with you. There were some dud segments, especially that US title one, which is a bit confusing. The That's Divas it. one as well. And the tag team one was a little bit of a dud just because you had new tag team champions not at the pay-per-view. So I do agree with you in that sense. What are you going to grade this show? Overall, I'm going to give it probably a C. Mm, yeah, I'll say C+. Plus. It wasn't the. It kept my entertainment. We had a good main event, two decent matches, but a lot of the filler stuff there wasn't the, wasn't very good. So C+, plus, I think it's a fair grade. I missed it with C because it's just not really got me looking forward to next week. Only apart, only apart from the main event, the rest of the night just didn't do much for me. Yeah. And once again, you see us, the British Fist, we even us have different opinions on things. So that's always good because that means we can argue about stuff. And the thing is now, guys, leave your comments on the Raw and what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Yes. I will make sure to watch out for our next video, which will be on Wednesday. Oh, no, Tuesday, Q&A. Tuesday. Where we're going to be booking our Raw and Smackdowns going into SummerSlam, so make sure you definitely check that out. And on the Wednesday video, where what do we do? We we basically rant about SmackDown and say mm. how we will sort out the problems on SmackDown. So keep at, keep your eyes out for those videos as well. Quick plugs there. So from me, Mr. Parkin, and this guy sitting next to me, NJ. What's up? That thank you very much for watching once again. Get your comments down below. Keep subscribing to the British Fist, and goodbye.